this is stuff you like and I'm firmly of the opinion that you shouldn't have to read novelization to figure out what's going on in a film. Because if you can't, with the whole world of cinematic language at your disposal, manage to convey what people are thinking and feeling, why are you making a film in the first place? That said, if you have a movie that has some issues, then a good novelization can go some way to ameliorating them. Being able to get inside the characters' heads means that you can convey exactly what they're feeling and much more explicitly tell people what their arcs are. I saw Rogue One in the cinema and I liked it enough to think, yeah, I'll get the DVD, but on reflection it's so unutterably depressing that it's the sort of movie I'm glad I watched once, but I also don't particularly want to watch again. Except maybe as part of a watch every Star Wars movie back to back day. I could go for one of those. The novelization though, that I like. By in contrast, I've watched The Force Awakens about six times, which is no mean feat considering that when I first tried to put it on, my toddler would cry every time Kylo Ren and his mask came on the screen. Although as it turns out, Last Jedi spoiler, Kylo Ren is an actual literal school shooter, so maybe that wasn't such a bad instinct, kid. The plot of Rogue One goeth thusly. Jin Erso is the daughter of Lyra and Galen Erso. Galen is a super clever engineering dude who they press gang into helping with the Death Star, again, by attempting to take him and hold his family hostage. Except his wife is shot and killed and his daughter escapes. Years pass and the rebellion is full of shady people who kill their allies to prevent them from being captured. The Empire is making a planet killer, did you know? Using kyber crystals like you get in lightsabers. The rebellion break Jin out of prison to get her to work for them. There are some shenanigans, her mentor is killed, a city gets blown up, and then her dad dies and they have to find the Death Star plans. Look, Darth Vader! And they get them and Leia gets them, but also absolutely everyone else dies. Baz and Chirrut, Cassian and Jin, K2SO, their robot friend, the pilot Bodhi Rook, the whole place is wiped out and all the rebels down there with it. It's not a particularly cheerful film. It did make me realise how good The Force Awakens is though, because The Force Awakens is fun and it's serious, and it's funny and it's emotionally resonant. And The Last Jedi gets pretty bleak, but it plays on my emotions like a virtuoso and I'm still not over that throne room scene. Just not over it. It's not that Rogue One is boring or humourless, it's just that it's set between the train wreck of angst that is Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, so you would expect the tone to be kind of dark. Also, it's more of a war movie than a coming-of-age story, so you know how that goes. But I do recommend the Rogue One novelization. It contains a lot more about the characters' feelings and motivations, and since I felt that they weren't always terribly well explained, that's a good thing. Also, and this is the best part, and an entirely underappreciated art form in my opinion, Alexander Freed's novelization contains the most amazingly treacherous, weaselly set of project management emails ever committed to Star Wars lore. That's probably less of a compliment than they deserve, actually. He seems to be a man who understands bureaucracy. I wonder if he's a Yes Minister fan. Sure, the movie overall is too bleak for my personal taste, but I am a huge fan of obfuscation by paperwork. I like to think that there's a whole army of secretly rebellious imperial administrators making everyone sign their forms in triplicate, not because they're committed to the glory of the Empire, but because they really hate it and want it to fail. They're not even necessarily associated with the rebellion, they just really hate the Empire, because they have to work there. We just want to make sure that accurate records are kept, my lord. If we don't know the precise location of every part and every soldier, then how do we know that someone isn't stealing from us? Petty thievery is antithetical to the Empire. Obviously, they prefer stealing on a grander scale. And of course, no one wants to tell said administrators off for this, because that might make them look unpatriotic or something, and so they get away with murder. I also appreciate Tarkin and Krennic's bickering via intergalactic email. Star Wars office politics are way better than regular office politics. In summary, Alexander Freed's Rogue One novelization is basically canon-compliant fanfic of the movie, which you would expect, but with stuff added in that makes everything more sensical, less depressing, and occasionally more hilarious. Huzzah. It even has extra information about Jeddah and how going to Jeddah is always a pilgrimage no matter who you are or what you believe. Living beings will always find their way to the kind and cold moon as they always have. Through the Force and Jeddah, they will act as they must, for good or ill, and we will know them by their actions there. See, there are the Star Wars feels. This was actually just a book review with a cunning movie style coating, wasn't it? Never mind. Thank you for watching and thank you as always to my patrons who are bestest and most beautiful. If you have a movie novelization that you thought really improved or ruined the film for you, then you should leave a comment about that. If not, you can always look to the right of my face for more Star Wars and regardless, I'll see you next time.